Hello Booktube, uh, today I'm going to be giving you my review of Rogue Harry's by Hugh Walpole, which was published in 1930. Um, I read this as a part of an event created by Roy Reed Anything called Rogue Delight, where you're encouraged to read um, the works of Hugh Walpole. Uh, Walpole is an author who is not much read now, but in his heyday from uh, the 1920s to the 1940s, he was wildly popular to the extent that people would write, would uh, name uh, their children after characters in his books. And when Roy suggested this event, I actually mistook Walpole for his distant relative from the 18th century, Horace Walpole, who was very much, probably the most famous for writing uh, The Castle of Otranto, which sort of established sort of gothic fiction. Um, and there, is, there are actually, in reading uh, Roy Carey's elements of sort of gothic, uh, gothic fiction, though there's no actual, super, there's nothing supernatural in it. Um, for me, this was the first time reading Walpole, and as a consequence, I'm not going to give give few, few if any, uh, spoilers about this, because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's never read um, Walpole, and particularly Royal Cage before. Now, the story is set in the Lake District from the 1730s up until the 1770s, and it follows uh, the life of uh, Francis Herries, uh, the Rogue Herries of the title, and his family, both his immediate family, particularly that of his son David, and his more extended relatives like his brothers and his uh, nephews and nieces and cousins. And so you see how they change and how the sort of family, family sort of changes over that pretty much 40-year uh, period, and how Francis's relationship with his family sort of... Um, becomes more distant and how the family sort of how he particularly settles in in the valley where the the Harrys the Harrys are settled in their uh, ancestral uh, family estate which is called the Harrys which causes some sort of um, confusions early on because Francis Harrys is referred to as Harrys and then the house is also referred to as Harrys so you, so if you're not you're not paying attention you can sometimes be a bit caught off by that um, now, I did find this book a bit hard going because there are long passages where Walpole will give huge amounts of sort of descriptions of everything going on, almost overloading you with sort of uh, every sort of smell and sight there is, um, whether it be in the valley or a taste or uh, a fair, a country fair or something like that. There's a particular scene at a country fair where that comes across strongly. However, once once I got in, got used to them, I sort of was able to get into the stride and really get through the book. I found uh, Francis Harry's an interesting character. He's not a particularly likable one, but he's certainly a complex one. And you can you get you can even though you can see there's he does terrible wrongs, and mistreats people, particularly his wife. You can also see feel deep sympathy for him because he's not an evil man. However, however poorly he treats people. Uh, David is a very likeable character and somebody you can really take to. Um, and the various other relatives uh, you've got, sort of, particularly I found um, Francis's brother Pomfret as a deeply sympathetic character who is in a sort of um, a particularly loveless marriage to a wife who doesn't like him very much and he is very scared of her. And I found quite I found the characters well drawn. Um, you could. They felt like real people, and it, the whole sort of. The, 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 one, th one thing I will say about the description was it's a bit hard going sometimes. It really does anchor you in the place and the time, and you get a real sense of what it must have been like to be in the Lake District in the 18th century. And for that, Walpole really does it, really does well. And I, I like some of the dialogue as well, where you get a mixture of uh, what seems like um, stage. Uh, at least to me, it seems like stage dialogue that you would expect of the era, combined with dialogue, the people, the sort of accented dialogue of some of the sort of more local characters. And again, overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, found some of the, as I say, those description parts a bit hard going, a bit sort of overloaded. Not over, not overwritten, but sort of overloaded. They seem to be sort of piling on. One thing to be piling on after another, and so it was, as I say, it made it a bit hard going initially. But 
as I say, once I'd gotten past that a couple of times, sort of, I got into sort of the, the groove of things, and so I didn't find by the time I got to the middle of the book it was particularly difficult. Um, I am I am going to read the other three uh, parts of the Harry's Chronicles, um, but I don't know when. Um, probably September or possibly October. I'll start the next one, which is Judith Paris. Um, I should say I read this as a, as you can see, a, a, there's a as a omnibus. I have got the second um, volume, which has the other two, which are just about a second. I'll just get that out. Uh, the other two are here. We go. Um, the Fortress and Vanessa, which I will also be reading those. But again, I don't know when. It may be at the end of this year or possibly the beginning of next, depending on how things go. But overall, I really enjoyed it. And as I say, I'm going to continue reading on at some point. And I would recommend um, anybody who's not read Walpole to do so because he's a really interesting writer. Unusual writer, but in a very good way. And so I can recommend him to anybody who's interested in reading him. So with that book, I'll say goodbye. Oh, oh, sorry, before I go any further, I should just say that the event, Road July, was also, also has co-hosts. Um, they are Sean de Stamfast and Debs from Rain and Read Stuff and myself. Oh, no, what I'll do is I'll leave all the, the, um, leave all the, um, the links to their channels as well as Roy's channels in the description below. So with that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you.